In the movies, we always see a crew of pirates on board a massive Spanish galleon or a large warship. But was this the case in reality? In a few cases, pirates did operate large vessels, and some were even warships, but this was certainly not the norm. Henry Every's ship, Fancy, was a man of war that was armed with 46 guns and a crew of 150. Blackbeard captured La Concorde in 1717 and renamed her Queen Anne's Revenge. She was another large ship that held around 40 guns and a crew of 300. The Witta Galley, captained by Sam Bellamy, was a converted slave ship which mounted 28 guns and 145 men in her crew. Most of the time, a group of pirates would be operating a smaller ship or a group of ships instead of one heavily armed vessel. One reason was ease of use. It was much easier to sail a smaller ship like a sloop than to operate a large merchantman or a warship. The pirates also took speed, maneuverability, and the draft of the vessel into account. It was smart for pirates to operate something that could slip in and out of coastal inlets, died from navies, as well as to wait for targets to pass so they could ambush them. Another issue was that it was difficult to capture a ship that was heavily armed, and pirates tended to go after weaker prizes in most cases. If a crew did capture a large merchantman or warship, one of the first things they would do was modify it to make it more effective in battle. They would add guns, tear out decks and walls, and reinforce the hull where it would be most vulnerable. Pirates would also throw anything that wasn't valuable or essential overboard to lighten the ship and increase her speed. They would also add sails if they could do so. The most common ship and the favorite of pirates was the Agile Sloop. Sloops are single-masted vessels rigged with a mainsail and a jib, and the guns arranged on a single fighting deck. They would have had far fewer guns, maybe six or seven, but the speed and maneuverability allowed them to avoid a broadside and attack the weakly defended sections of their prey. If the larger ship looked as though it had the upper hand, the pirates could outrun it and, as I mentioned earlier, duck into a culve or inlet where the larger ship couldn't follow. The guns on board pirate sloops were smaller too. They would usually range in size from four to six pounders, but on some occasions they may have long nines, which were long-barreled nine-pounders. The pirates slept below deck or even on deck, and a typical sloop would carry between 20 and 80 depending on the size. When attacking merchant fleets, pirates used tactics similar to those wolves used. They would pick a weak-looking ship out and try to separate it before attacking. They would approach from the bow or stern so the main guns were facing away from them. On the other side of the law were the naval warships. These were, in some cases, absolutely massive, and a pirate would never dare to approach them. The largest warships were called ships of the line. These ships carried between 32 and 144 guns, arranged on three and sometimes four decks. Typically, the cannons were 32 to 42 pounders, which would quickly sink a ship if they hit the hull. The galleon would have been the Spanish equivalent. Frigates were smaller than a ship of the line and would carry between 24 and 40 guns, usually between 12 and 24 pounders. The USS Constitution is a surviving frigate. Another class was the Corvette or Sloop of War. These vessels with two or three masts were, just like the sports car named after them, very fast and carry between 12 and 20 guns in sizes between 6 and 12 pounders. Larger, three-masted corvettes could carry even more guns. Most often, the pirates could easily break contact and avoid the larger but slower ships of the line and frigates, but not the corvettes. I'm sure they would have been very worried if they saw one of these. It's important to remember that almost all of the pirates came from either the navy or merchant shipping, so they would have all known how to sail a ship to a degree, but beyond that, not much more. Some crews had specialized crew like carpenters, navigators, and pilots on board, but some did not. These people would often be forced to join a pirate crew because of their knowledge, and there are several accounts of this happening. In other cases, like with the famous Henry Morgan, he was an experienced captain. He ended up commanding a fleet of over 30 ships and 1,200 buccaneers, so he certainly would have had a crew that was more than competent for the day. Often this was not the case, and eventually Blackbeard, Sam Bellamy, and many other pirates would lose their ships, and in some cases like Bellamy's, their lives as well. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and learned something new. If this is your first time on the channel, I'd like to welcome you aboard. If you liked this video today, please subscribe and give us a like. We also have a link to our PayPal and Patreon below. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below.